Hey everybody, Mike here from Muscle for Life and Legion Athletics. And in this video, we're gonna talk creatine, specifically which form of creatine is most effective. Now, you've probably heard that creatine is one of the few supplements that don't suck. One of the few supplements that are actually worth taking, and that is true. It is one of the most researched molecules in all of sports nutrition, and hundreds and hundreds of studies have confirmed that it can help you build muscle faster, it can help you get stronger faster, it can help you recover faster from your workouts, and it can improve your anaerobic endurance. What isn't so clear though is which form you should take and why. Should you stick to the tried and true monohydrate form or should you go with something fancier like creatine nitrate or maybe ethyl ester or maybe hydrochloride? What about liquid versus powder? What about buffered versus micronized? And on and on and on. Well, we are going to get to the bottom of it in this video podcast. Now I'm gonna skip the creatine 101. I'm not gonna talk about what creatine is or how it works in the body exactly. If you wanna know that stuff, just click here to check out an article that I wrote, an in-depth article on creatine. What I wanna do here is just go through the different forms of creatine that are on the market and break down which are good and which are not. So let's start at the top with creatine monohydrate. This is the form of creatine used in the majority of studies demonstrating its benefits. It is the gold standard of creatine, if you will. Next on the list is creatine citrate, which is creatine bound with citric acid. And research shows that it is more water soluble than creatine monohydrate, but that does not mean that it is better absorbed or that it is more effective, which is what many supplement marketers try to tell you. Next on the list is creatine ethyl ester, which is supposedly a form of creatine that converts back into usable creatine in the body. And if you listen to the marketers, it is better absorbed by your muscles than creatine monohydrate. However, studies show that it's actually less effective than creatine monohydrate on par with a placebo. And the reason for this is instead of being converted back into usable creatine in the body, it's converted into an inactive substance called creatinine. And next we have liquid creatine, creatine suspended in water, usually just creatine monohydrate suspended in water. And unfortunately studies show that liquid creatine is less effective than taking a creatine monohydrate powder because once it has sat in a liquid for a long enough period of time, the creatine breaks down into that inactive substance creatinine. Okay, so next we have micronized creatine, which is simply creatine that has been processed to reduce the particle size, to make the creatine particles smaller. It's usually creatine monohydrate. And while this does increase water solubility, it does not increase effectiveness or muscle absorption or anything else. Okay, so now we have creatine nitrate, which is as you can guess, creatine bound with a nitrate group. And this increases water solubility. And also nitrates do have ergogenic properties. However, no studies have been done comparing creatine nitrate to creatine monohydrate. So we don't really know yet if it's better. Okay, next is creatine magnesium chelate, which is creatine bound with magnesium. And the reason why it is combined with magnesium is magnesium plays a role in creatine metabolism, and therefore it is theorized that by combining them, you can make the creatine more effective. Now it's an interesting theory, but it hasn't exactly panned out in research. One study found that creatine magnesium chelate was more or less the same as creatine monohydrate in terms of effectiveness, but did result in less water weight gain. The bottom line here is we just need more research on creatine magnesium chelate to know if it has any considerable benefits over creatine monohydrate. Next is buffered creatine, which at this point, as you can probably guess, it's more marketing than anything else. Buffered creatine is a form of creatine that has been processed to raise its pH level, and somehow that's supposed to make it more effective. However, research shows otherwise. It shows that it is no more effective than creatine monohydrate. Okay, next is creatine malate, which is creatine bound with malic acid. And while studies show that malic acid may have ergogenic properties, it may be able to enhance physical performance. It has not been studied in conjunction with creatine, so we just don't know. Okay, the last form I wanna talk about is creatine pyruvate, which is creatine bound with pyruvic acid. And research shows that it may produce higher plasma levels of creatine than creatine monohydrate, but this doesn't make it better absorbed or more effective. So the bottom line here is there's no reason to pay for these fancier, more hyped up versions of creatine when creatine monohydrate remains the gold standard, remains the best bang for your buck as far as creatine goes. That's why I chose creatine monohydrate for my post-workout supplement, Recharge. 
uh, which has two other ingredients that help with post-workout recovery and reducing muscle soreness. If you want to learn more about it, click the link. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please do give it a like and drop a comment down below letting me know what you thought. And feel free to share your experiences supplementing with creatine as well. Has it worked well for you? Which forms have you tried? Which form have you settled on? Let me know. Oh, and if you want to know when my next video goes live, and if you want to give me an encouraging pat on the back, then subscribe to my channel. Just click the button down here, over here somewhere, the red button, the red subscribe button. It's free, of course, and then click the bell next to it, and you'll be notified when the next video goes up.